you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Boss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from the com. The com. Welcome to the big show, my friends and family. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by the show. Uh, 14 years, 1400 episodes plus, and we just keep on growing and doubling size every year, which is hard to do at this point, but it just amazes me how those numbers work. I am your host, Chris Voss, the man with an ego so big, he can fit about 10 multiple personalities into it. Talk to my therapist. Anyway, guys. <laughs> The stuff I make up on the ramble, you have no idea how this is never pre-written. Uh, maybe some of you do. You're like, yeah, he just made that shit up and it sucked. Anyway, guys, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to youtube.com forward slash goodreads.com forward slash Chris Foss. YouTube.com forward slash Chris Foss, the big LinkedIn newsletter. And we're over on TikTok now. We're trying to get the show going on there, uh, the TikTok, so we can be cool with the kids. Those kids, uh, those young teenagers and 20-year-olds and all their instagrammy TikToky. we're trying to be cool because we're old uh but we're smart and that's about all we have going for us um so we're over there too and there's even a channel called chris voss's huskies and it it has my huskies videos of my dogs so if you hate me and my ugly fat face you can uh, go look at my huskies instead and uh, you know you listen to the podcast you don't have to look at my face when you're watching it <laughs> there's that anyway we always have the brightest minds on the show and none of them are me uh and that's why we have guests so we can have a smart show and not a dumb show because god knows the smarter you are the sexier you are and the more people will like you i don't know I, i'm not sure my attorneys say i can say that but i just did so sue me anyway guys richard a moran is on the show with us today he's the author of the latest book to come out from wiley i think it is april 5th 2023 Never say whatever. How small decisions make a big difference. Uh, Richard has served as a CEO, a college president, a venture capitalist, and a top-level consultant. He is a set of one. He has worked for or with some of the world's leading organizations, including Accenture, Apple, News Corp., American Airlines, PG&E, and many others. He prides himself on his matter-of-fact manner of consulting and believes that many parts of the business world are needlessly complicated. He brings up perspective to bear as it relates to decision-making in never say whatever. Welcome to the show, Richard. How are you? Chris, that's a great setup. Thanks. Uh, I'm glad to be dealing with your multiple personalities here. Uh, as long as the kill, kill, kill one doesn't emerge, <laughs> the judge says it's okay and I can remain free on bail. I'm but, just kidding, folks. I'm, I'm with you. I'm in, a, I'm in a mild state of arousal just thinking about how this whole show is going to go. Yeah, my nipples are hard right now. No, I'm just kidding. That's a joke, people. They're not. Uh, anyway, guys. <laughs> <laughs> call me. Call me. we're just we're just going to call you one of, one of both of you and i will just go do stand up on the road how's that yeah. we'll just we'll just be a t team like uh i don't know pen gillette or something uh anyway give us your dot com so people can find you on the interwebs please yeah well um everybody hates the word whatever everybody says I oh whatever somebody. yeah everybody says i know somebody who says whatever and i hate it when they do that and i ask people that you know 100 percent of people say I know somebody who says whatever, I'm going to kill them. And then I ask the same audience, how many of you say whatever? And only like half of them will say it, but it's not true. Everybody says whatever. It's the most annoying word in the world. In the, in the world. And I'm here to try to kill it. There you go. It's even more annoying when it's the California Valley girl who's like, whatever. That's, uh. Yeah, well, that's where it started with uh, Alicia Silverstone, you know, doing the doing the W out, out there. Ah, um, uh, yeah. But, um, you know, two things happen when you say the word. One mm -hmm. is you're projecting the notion that you're a slacker or you're a stoner or you don't give a shit. Uh, or you're not making a decision. It's usually both. Mm -hmm. And it's the little decisions that make for a successful life, successful career, and make you happier. So 
my my premise of the book is stop saying the word, make the decision, and things your life gets better. There it's you simple go. Simple as that. Simple as that. So, Richard, give us a .com or wherever you want people to look you up on the interwebs, too. So Some people look you up during the show so they can sure. kind of get to know you better. Just go to, you can go to richardmoran.com, uh, and uh, that's that's my website. And I do look at it, and I do respond, and uh, – I'm I'm here to I'm here to I'm here to cure you, including you, Chris. Uh, I you're gonna have to argue with my therapist over that. He's he's saying that uh, in order to eliminate the multiple personalities, we need a frontal lobotomy. So uh, <laughs> that might be the cure. No, just stop saying whatever, and it'll get better. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know, you know, it's like an earwig. The word is like an earwig. You know, for you now. For you, Chris Voss, uh, for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week, you're, every time you say or hear that word, whatever, it's going to be like you know the, you know the, a theme from uh, Cars for Kids or something. You won't be able to get rid of this word. Yeah. Now it's I'm going to have it. I, I wish I'd set up the sound bite in the show to have a sound uh, plug that I could hit with the Valley Girl going whatever. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. The, so, uh, so I, and I took a look at your website and I can verify that it is yours. Um, so you, you are on this mission. Uh, would, is that a correct thing to say? Because I'm reading from the PR agency and what they sent me, but you're on a mission to get rid of this W word, the whatever word. Is this a mission from God, like blues brothers or what's going on? <laughs> no, it's just, uh, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot of books written about decision-making mm -hmm. and those, those books include you know, lots of sophisticated modeling and, you know, spreadsheets and pivot tables and flux capacitors. I don't know. Decision making doesn't have to be that difficult. Mm -hmm. But here, here's some numbers. Um, when you go out to lunch with a colleague, you are making about 300 decisions. Mm -hmm. Researchers at Cornell have this figured out. Mm -hmm. During the course of a day, you make about 35,000 decisions. So think. So I'm think tired about already. Lunch. Wow. Yeah. So think, so think about lunch. You, you go out, you know, where do we go? Where do we sit? Is it cold enough? Is it hot enough? Do I want roast beef? Do I want chicken? Do, do I want sourdough, whole wheat? And every time you say the word whatever, you're likely to get the sandwich that you don't want. Ah. So, so there you go. It's a simple, simple metaphor about, about that. And people get confused. They think that there's, well, I have, there's so many big decisions. There aren't. Mm. Life is made up of a lot of, you know, minuscule decisions. So, you know, when you, and again, it's research, but people are hard pressed to name more than 10 or 12 big decisions in their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, where you live, who you marry, you know, where you go to school, your faith, whether or not you should get a dog. I don't know. There's, there's just not a lot of big decisions. So uh, it's, it, I don't want to sound like a, like a missionary, but it's a simple decision making tool. If you just stop saying that one word, things get better. There you go. Is there a psychology for a reason we default to whatever? Is there some sort of thing in our brain where we're just like, mm, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be difficult. I don't want to be the pain in the butt person. I don't want to be, you know, seen as, uh, uh, you know, highly, uh, what, what's the word some people, are complicated or highly demanding or highly selfish or you know, there's yeah. kind of maybe a some people approach it from that or, yeah. or, you know, they, you, some people, you know, they're high maintenance, you know, and, yeah. uh, you don't want to be seen as that. So you're just like, oh, well, you know, whatever, I'm good. You yeah. know, I'll do whatever. Yeah. Whatever can mean, I'll, I'll just go along with it. That's, that's one, that's one lazy way to fill, to fill the air with, with the word, but mm -hmm. it usually is, you know, it can be passive aggressive. It can be, dismissive. Ah. It can mean screw you. It can mean, I mean, it, mean, it can mean I'm helpless. It can mean I'm lazy. It can mean you make the decision for me and I'll blame you later. I mean, there's like 20 different <laughs> decisions that, and they're all, the only good way to say whatever is, you know, I love you and I'll do whatever it takes to win your affections. Other than that, it just is, um, you know, the psychologists would say it's uh, you're avoiding a decision. And we do that because there's so many decisions in our lives right now. Mm -hmm. you know, and um, and when you don't make them, they tend to pile up, and then we get decision fatigue, and then it's even worse. You might so, be able to attribute whatever too to women speak. And it's kind of like when women say "fine" and they're not fine, and yeah. uh, maybe if a woman says "whatever," whatever you want to do, buddy. Yeah, uh, it's not. Uh, she really doesn't mean whatever you, that you should do. You know, <laughs> I have to admit that a lot of uh, 
guys have told me, well, women say that. Oh. And, and young women say that. And guess what? It's not the case. Yeah. And everybody says it, you know, old men, young men, uh, in in every country, every every state. I had a I had a New Yorker tell me, well, you know, I'm from New York. We're in your face all the time. Whatever. Whatever. And, you know, he said it in the same sentence. Yeah. Um, so it's not it's not Valley Girl speak. It's but it can also think about this. It can be. You can say the word, or you can shrug your shoulders, or you can roll your eyes, or you can give somebody the middle finger. I mean, there's there's lots of ways to convey whatever. Um, but it's it's the same message all the time, and it can be a real passive aggressive way to to deal with people. Definitely, well, that explains my first seven marriages. Ah, uh, that's that's just yeah. a joke, people. Well, I'm married nine. You know, it, <laughs> if it comes up often, where it drives women crazy when they when you know you get together for dinner and the woman says, "Hey, honey, what do you want for dinner?" and the guy says, "Whatever." You know, which is, you know, she wants to punch him in the face because it's it she's it's a way to say I'm I'm dismissing you. So, ah. Yeah. And again, it's it's bad. So it's not I, it is something that everyone says and it is just an easy way to cure yourself of of something that that's easy to do. Is there any good case of using the word whatever that uh, won't get you in trouble? Or uh, is it pretty much just a bad word that we need to yeah. maybe put on the four-letter word expletive uh, list there? Well, you know, one of the things that I did for the book is I interviewed a bunch of people about the word mm -hmm. and whether or not they say it, who uses it. And, you know, people, you know, real leaders don't say it. You know, real people on a mission don't say it. You know, Steve Jobs didn't say whatever. Warren Buffett doesn't say whatever. Um, and I interviewed uh, Michael Huerta, who used to be the head of the Federal Aviation Administration. He had 156,000 air traffic controllers reporting to him. A big job. So I, it took me a while to eat from, for, to, for him to even understand the premise of the book. He said, I, you know, at the FAA, that, that is not something that I, nobody ever talks about. I mean, can you imagine the pilot talking to the air traffic control saying, you know, runway left, runway right, you know, and the air traffic control guy says, whatever. You know, whatever, you know, just pick a lane you want to land on. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. just, just uh, pick yeah. one, and, run with yeah. it. Just let us know which, where you're landing. Yeah, or and there's certain careers. I mean, your brain surgeon doesn't say whatever. <laughs> oh, that would be bad. Yeah, so, you know, so certain people in certain worlds, you know, it's not a part of their world, but it's... <laughs> But in most cases, it is, I found, you know, in the interviews, I found that the larger the organization, the more likely it is that people say whatever, because their voice doesn't count. Really? You know, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever, you know, huh. you know, they're, they're homeless people or whatever, around whatever. So, you know, whatever, I'll, you know, and no, you know, there's probably ways to deal with this. Yeah, there really is a dismissiveness. In fact, you really struck me with that, that in larger in the larger the organizations people don't seem like they have a voice and say whatever and i can see how that leads to con to con complacency yeah. in an organization and powerlessness you know yeah. when i wrote my book beacons of leadership i talked about how everyone can be a leader no matter whether they're in middle management whether they're running a team even if they're not empowered with you know i, I worked at companies when i was young uh where i just exercise leadership abilities whether anybody liked it or not sometimes it yeah. got me fired sometimes people liked it and employed it uh and empowered it but um you know if, if people don't feel like they're empowered in an organization that can be and they have that whatever thing maybe yeah. that's the same approach we also you know it's a life approach too we it seem is. to as americans uh not be shocked anymore by school shootings and other things that are happening in our world and we're just kind of like seem to almost be saying whatever because we we don't really do anything about it and yes. so it looks like it affects everything in our lives uh, public and business yeah and, and and i and i want people to take a little bit of responsibility and be accountable i, I talk about i mean it happens everywhere especially when, when we were back in the office remember offices mm -hmm. um, where I do. Um, you'd go to the break room or the kitchen and over the sink there'd be a little three by five card that said the maids have been fired. So clean up after yourself. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then you look in the sink and there's piles of, you know, dirty dishes from tacos and Chinese food. 
Yeah, that's me usually. So you're faced with a choice. Do I say whatever and you just load your own dishes on, on top of the pile? Or do you clean up after yourself or do you clean up after everybody else? It's just not a whatever situation. And it's, it's so, so, that's such a small example, but it's so indicative and metaphorical for all the whatevers we have in our life every single day. And, you know, maybe people should also look at it as an opportunity to lead. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, I'll just, I'll just talk about when my tribe gets together of men, my tribe of men, and when we do gaming and like the worst thing that can happen is, you know, there's several options in call of duty of different gaming plays that we can do as a tribe to go, you know, hunt and kill the, you know, that whole caveman thing that guys are into. And there's nothing worse than when there's six of us going, Hey, what do you, wh- which game should we do? What do we, what do we want to do? Uh, uh, whatever. And everybody says whatever, and like no one takes the lead. And then somebody finally asks, like, "Oh fuck it, we're just gonna fucking go do this because everyone's saying whatever." And it, it is an opportunity to lead. I mean, especially if you're yeah. maybe someone in an organization like you talked about where they don't feel empowered. There's an opportunity to lead right there and to take the mantle. And those are the people I think that usually get promoted and are successful. Is that people that. Uh, show leadership qualities because those yeah. are the people that will ascend to the top of the organization and and usually um uh you know i mean they, they don't they don't they don't give ceo positions to people who are followers and say whatever i don't think well they don't last long if anybody who's in leadership who says whatever doesn't doesn't last long but that's true you know, you know but, uh, steve jobs you you mentioned that earlier steve jobs when they're like hey what should we do to you know, uh, bolster sales of the Mac and stuff. He didn't just go, well, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Should we do the iPhone? I don't know. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, no. But I, I have, there is good news here because I, I discovered the cure. There right. is a cure for whatever. And it's very simple. And it's about, and the leaders all taught me this. It's about having a clear intention. Mm. That's all it takes. So uh, the this, the examples I use, if, if you and if you have an intention, then the decisions are easy. If you intend to lose weight, your decisions are all about being on a diet. If mm. you intend to stay married, you act and make decisions about you are married. You act oh. like you are married. If you if if you intend to uh, get in shape, then your decision is to take the stairs, not the elevator. So mm. it's very you know it's a three simple words: actions follow intent, decisions follow intent. And I make it sound simple, but it's not. If you, mm. but every day, if you clarify your intent, then the decisions you make about that day are are better. That makes sense. I mean, that really does because yeah. uh, you, you know we tend to kind of do what we're focused on, and so if you're focused on the wrong thing, like you're looking at something and going, "I don't like this, and I don't want to do it," uh, you're going to focus on things that maybe sabotage or don't do it. Yeah. And if you're focused on making something work. You know, like uh, we could fall back to Steve Jobs again. One of my friends uh, was on the team that built the iPhone. And one of the hardest things they had to do was, you know, cram a fax machine in it and a phone in it and a camera in it and all these giant big things that, especially back then, were big. Uh, and cram it into, you know, the software on this little teeny phone. And um, if they would have said, you know, well, I don't know, whatever, man. I don't know if this is going to work. It wouldn't have happened. But the intent was to cram all that stuff in there and somehow make it work. And yeah. even when Steve Jobs announced it, it wasn't working properly. It was crashing about every three motions. And it was a miracle. It worked on stage. And there was multiple phones in the desk, too. Um, but uh, it still took them, I think, another six months to perfect it before they could even release the product. But the intent was the key. Yeah, yeah. And and when you think about it, you know, when when I talk about intent, people think, well, we're – we're talking about a big corporation. We're talking about IBM and they put their mission and their vision and their intentions up on the wall. And I'm bringing it down I'm to the personal level about clarifying your intent. And it's hard to do, but if you have a clear intent, then decisions are easy. If my, my intention, my intent is to get this book out and make it popular, make it a bestseller. So that's why I'm with you today. I made mm-hmm. the decision to be with you today. Oh, well, that's good that you did. That's yeah, and right here now. we are, and I hope every I hope it happens. So, but think about it just like that, and you can do it every day. Just clarify your intent. To, today, I intend to get exercise, so I'm going to make some decisions so I have free time to do that. There so, you go. Yeah. And I intended to bring my 
good personality to the uh, of my ten personalities to the uh, to the show today, and I think it's working so far. I so haven't heard far. the yeah, I haven't really? heard the kill 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 voice, so still we're doing it. You're, yeah, you're, but there's still time. Great. <laughs> <laughs> what haven't we touched on that you cover in your book that we can tease out? Well, there's things you know people people need to recognize that it's about I'm talking about them, and I'm mm. I'll give you a little survey. So mm. here's some questions I have like. Um, do you eat sick? Do you eat second helpings even when you don't want them? Whatever. They're well, good. That's, you know, that's, a good, that's a way to get fat. Do you I've, seen that. I've seen that movie. I am that movie. <laughs> do you, do you schedule or attend meetings to kill time? That's a, that's whatever. Or do mm. you hang around with friends that you don't like? That's, that's whatever. Mm. Um, I mean, there's just, do you, do you not, get dressed up for a zoom meeting. Do you say whatever about that? Because people notice it's not, it's not a whatever world. It's a, it's a people notice world. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. It definitely is. I love the concept of whatever. Now I'm going to feel guilty saying it. Although uh, the opposite has happened in my brain. I, I just want to say whatever. Oh my God. <laughs> I know. No. I know. You'll, hey. You're going to think about me. I, I mean, I'm going to be like, uh, I'm going to be like Barney when he sings happy birthday. To your, Are you to talking kids, me? You know, no, I'm just kidding. In your ear. <laughs> but no, I'm going to be more conscious of it. And I think that's the great thing about your book and what you're bringing to light is that we need to be conscious of this data and, uh, you know, taking more leadership roles. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I know even in my relationships with women, uh, you know, if you ask them, what do you want to eat? Where do you want to go? I don't know, whatever. Uh, they want you to lead. And so you pick yeah. a place and you go, you set up, you know, when you set, when I set up a date, I, I lead. I, I pick the place, I pick the time, I, I say where we're going, and, and that's where we're going. Um, and, uh, you know, people like leaders. We look through life. I, I think people don't realize how much we look through life for leadership and leaders and people to guide us. It's kind of an innate nature of, of uh, human beings. And I don't know why, maybe it's a tribal mentality or a community mentality. There always has to be a leader. And so whether it's politics, whether it's business, whether it's life coaches or maybe an author or, you know, whoever, you know, maybe it's a TV show host. Oprah was a great leader to a lot of women and people, uh, you know, whatever that is described to, it seems like we're always kind of searching for messages. And it seems like we look to leaders to tell us those messages. And, and I suppose you can describe to whatever the caveman basis is that. But there tends to be a lot fewer leaders then there are followers. It seems like there's a lot more followers than there yeah. are leaders. Yeah. And, uh, and it just, maybe that's the way the dynamic works, but you know, understanding these things of leadership, et cetera, et cetera. You know, in the next book you should write is, is, uh, one of the things that I come across a lot of times, especially on dates is, is, uh, people use the word like, and you know, like, you know, like, 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 you know, you know, like, 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 <laughs> Those are a little more benign than, than the word whatever. I would so, give you that. And everybody knows, you know, the retailers, everybody knows that we're having trouble with decisions and choices right now and comments mm -hmm. about your leadership. And my favorite restaurant in San Francisco is the House of Prime Rib. They oh. have taken all the choices out of your world because you don't go there to get fish. You don't go there yeah. for vegan food, huh? Well, I'm not, I don't even know they have it. But, Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> that but it's, title, right? The world is recognizing marketers are recognizing that we're that we're struggling with choices, mm -hmm. and and I think we're struggling with leadership, as you said. Yeah, it's 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 really become a I don't know what's going on with the whole leadership thing, but it seems like we are struggling with that a lot. And people, um, I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if people are just less leadershipery, they're they're leadershipery anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> People love leaders who can make decisions. And yeah, even yeah. if they're hard decisions, they like leaders who can make decisions. They will follow people, leaders who can make decisions. But, you know, as you said earlier, at the most basic level, we're all in charge of something, whether it's, you know, your your church group or your bowling team, or at the most basic, basic level, you're in charge of your own, of your own life. So mm -hmm. make decisions about that. Yeah, that's always a good idea. Make decisions about your own life. That's quite the concept you got there, man. Uh, <laughs> we should all do that. Uh, anything more you want to tease out in the book before we go? Just that uh, I, in the book, I put out a lot of tools and hacks about how to make decisions. They're all easy. 
you know, everything from lists of pros and cons to, you know, one person said when, when, she, when it was a guy, when, it, when he has to make decisions, he consults with the magic eight ball, just turns it over. And, you know, that's how he makes decisions. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a way that works for him. So go with it. But the book is full of little easy ways to make decisions. Yeah. Unless the magic eight ball says whatever, you know, then that's. It fine. doesn't say that. It doesn't? There's not one in there? No. It might say answer hazy, try again. That's as close as it's going to get. I'm going to go I'm going to go make an eight ball that every answer always comes up as whatever. Yeah. And some uh people, some people And then it. uh I'm I'm going to sell it as the ultimate uh passive aggressive non-decision makers eight ball uh thing as a parody oh, wow. as a parody joke, I don't know, thing. Don't and send it to me. I won't send it to you. <laughs> You know what's happening with the book that I like is people are buying it and leaving it on their boss's chair at night, or uh -huh. leaving leaving it in their in their partner's under their pillow, you know, as in stop saying this word. Can I can I do a five star review on Amazon and just say whatever? Yeah, you probably can. As long as it's a five star, right? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll whatever with this book. No, I really love the idea, and you've really made me, uh, you've given me a piff in here, too, as to why people feel uh, disempowered in big corporations. That's a big deal for people. And the other thing I love about your concepts, Richard, is, you, like you said at the beginning, we make everything overly complex, and therefore we have a harder time getting to the truth and honesty about something or resolving issues. And life is really simple, you know? Some simple rules. Do good unto others. Like you would have them doing to you, like it, whether you're religious or not. I'm an atheist. I mean, that makes sense. It's like, yeah. hey, I don't want people to be marauders and steal my possessions and raid my house. So I won't raid anybody's house this week. Maybe next week. Good idea. Uh, yeah, that's what the judge says, too. Um, so there you go. Oh, well, Richard, it's been very insightful to have you on the show and you've expanded our minds and our knowledge. Give us a dot com so we can find you on the interwebs and learn more. It's richardmoran.com. The book is available everywhere. So um, I, I think whether you buy it for your college graduate who's facing all these decisions or anybody else, you know, I think I'll leave you with three words. Never say whatever. Never say whatever. That's the key word. And uh, hopefully you're giving us plenty to think about. I, I know whenever I say, if I say whatever anytime soon, I'm going to be like, oh, my God. I'm in your uh, ear. I'm in your ear. Yeah, I, I've, I'll, be, I'll just slap myself with the rolled up uh, newspaper or something. That's usually how I uh, train myself. Uh, I have dogs. So, you know, that's how we train Chris around the world. In fact, my dogs hit me with newspapers. Don't hit your dogs with newspaper. That's people. That's a 70s joke. Uh, anyway, order up the book wherever fine books are sold, people. Uh, never say whatever. Whatever. Never say whatever. Uh, how small decisions can make a big difference in your life out April 5th, 2023. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Be sure to refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Check out the new AI podcast at AI uh, podcast, Chris Voss.com, or I think it's AI Chris Voss.com. There's a few variations we bought as a referral. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe and don't say whatever. We'll see you next time. <laughs>